Let's discuss two special limits that come up a lot in calculus. So the first one comes up quite a bit. It's the limit as x approaches 0 of sine x over x. And this is basically something you want to memorize. This is equal to 1. Okay, so super important, um, super useful to know this, uh, totally worth uh, memorizing if you are studying calculus. The other one is also important. It doesn't come up as often. It's the limit as x approaches 0 of 1 minus cosine x over x. And this is equal to 0. So this is also an important one, but it doesn't come up as often in like the exercises. So if you're taking, um, let's say, a calculus class, um, you're not going to see this as much as you are this one. Okay, so let's go ahead and do a bunch of examples practicing using these special limits. And they're not hard to use, but they do require a little bit of, what's the word I'm looking for? Finesse. <laughs> so let's start off with a simple example. I can just make some up. Let's see the limit as x approaches 0 of sine of 2x over x. Okay, so we have to find uh, this limit. So first let me say what not to do. So a very common mistake is people think that you can pull out the 2. You cannot pull out numbers from the sine function or the cosine function, right? This is, this is wrong. So sine 2x equals 2 sine x. This is super bad. So you can't pull numbers out. So just something that needs to be said right away so that there's no confusion. So in this formula here, you have sine x over x. So the key point here is that this is the same as this. So here in this problem, we have a 2x and we have an x, but they're not the same. So what we would like to do is we would like to make them the same. So here's how we're going to do that. This is the limit as x approaches 0 of sine 2x, okay? And then here's the trick. We really want the bottom to be a 2x. We want them to be the same. So what do you do? Well, you, <laughs> you just put the 2 there because you can do whatever you want as long as you fix it later. See, so these aren't equal, right? This is wrong because this has a 2 and this doesn't. So what you do is you put a 2 here on the outside. And that's okay because what's happening is basically you're basically multiplying by 1, right? Uh, this is really 2 over 1. So 2 over 1, and then you have a 2 down here. They're going to cancel, so nothing has really happened. Uh, except now it matches this formula. And so now you see that this matches this, basically. Because as x approaches 0, 2x also approaches 0. So this, is, this piece is going to 0, and this piece is going to 0. We have a sine function here. So this whole expression is equal to 1. This limit is equal to 1. This is 2 times 1, which is 2. Now, if you're not convinced, if you're not convinced what you can do, so alt solution. And this is not something I do, but I've seen other people do it. And so I'm just going to show you so you know how to do it. So when you get to this point here, where you have 2 times limit x approaches 0 of sine 2x over 2x, you can make a substitution, right? You can say, you can say, hey, let's set u equal to 2x, okay? And then note, note as x approaches 0, u, which is equal to 2x, right? It's 2 times 0. So u also approaches 0 because it's 2 times it's two times a number that's approaching 0, so it's going to approach 0 also. So you can take your limit that you have here, okay? You can take this and you can write it as follows. 2 parentheses limit u approaching 0 of sine u over u. It's worth seeing this even if you think it's harder, and I do think it's harder, it's more work. Why would you do this? But you can make a substitution. It's something you can do when you're evaluating limit problems. A lot of people don't do that and they don't see that in a calculus course because most of the time when you're doing limits, you're not making substitutions, but you can do it. And so now you see that you can do it. And now it matches our formula. Up here, our formula was x approaching 0, sine x over x equals 1, right? So um, 
yeah, it's, we're just changing the variable from x to u, so it matches the formula perfectly. So now it's two times one, which is two. So this is a, a better way to do it, perhaps, but uh, I don't think it's necessary. Personally, I just do it like this, and then I make a note and say, hey, wait a minute, this is approaching zero, this is approaching zero, we have a sign function, the formula applies, right? So we can do it. Um, let's do another one, let's do another one, and we're gonna avoid this method from now on, uh, simply because I, th I think most people don't do it that way. All right, let's do another one. Limit, uh, x approaches zero of, let's just do sine three x, and this time I'm gonna put a two x here on the bottom, so it's already there, it's already there. By the way, in all of these, which, which I should mention, um, the reason we have these special limits is because if you try to plug in zero into any of these, it's it's not going to work, okay? So we just end up memorizing these results and applying these results to other problems. Okay, so here uh, we have sine 3x over 2x. So if we want to use our matching formula, this down here needs to be a three, right? Because remember the formula is limit x approaches zero of sine x over x equals one. I'm just gonna write it here for you in case you forgot. So that's the one we're using. So here, um, we need a three down here. So let me just show you how I do it. I do it like this. Limit, x approaches zero. So we have sine three x. Well, we, we have to keep that. Right? We can't change that. And then on the bottom, well, we know if we want to apply this formula, it has to match, right? So what do you do? You just do whatever you want and you fix it later. So this is three x. This, this same technique, by the way, of doing this and fixing it later applies to so many other things in mathematics. Later on, you'll, if you'll learn, if you keep studying mathematics, you'll learn about um, power series, Laurent series, Laplace transforms. There's problems in all of those areas in math where this technique of, of writing down what you want and fixing it later applies. So it's a good way to think, at least in my opinion. So sine 3x over 3x. Now what you can do is say, hey, wait a minute. Um, I just put a three there, I gotta take it away. What about the two? You can factor it out. Boom, right? So think about what just happened here. So let me just do it again. Let me just do it again. You want a three X there, so you put it there. You say, oh, that's wrong, you can't just put it there, so you gotta take it away. And then the two, you pull it out on the bottom. So now you see the three cancels. If you were to multiply this back into the limit, the threes would cancel and you would have a two on the bottom beautiful. And so now this expression here, this limit rather, is one by our formula. This is three halves times one, which is equal to three halves. Beautiful. Let's, let's switch gears now and let's do an example for the other one. And I don't have one off the top of my head, so I have a list of problems here. So I'm going to see if I can find one uh, where we can use the other formula. Let me just take a look here. Uh, let's see. Let's take a look. Yeah, this one's okay. So here's one limit. Uh, X approaches zero. Uh, this one is one minus cosine X squared over X. So we have this one here. We should be able to do this pretty easily. So the other formula, okay, the other formula, again, it doesn't come up that often. Um, the other formula was this. It was the limit as X approaches zero of one minus cosine x over x, and this is equal to zero, okay? This is the formula we had at the very beginning. Let me just scroll up and refresh your memory where it was. It was at the very beginning of our discussion. So it's this other limit, which again is important, but it just doesn't come up as often in courses that are taught, you know, uh, calculus courses. All right, so here we kind of have that, but we have an extra factor of one minus cosine x. So what I'm thinking is we can write it like this. This is the limit as x approaches zero. We can write this as one minus cosine x over x times, and then we still have a one minus cosine x over here. It's really over one, okay? So it's really like this, right? It's really the same thing. Um, I typically don't do that though. I'll just write it like this normally. You know, it's over one. Or if you like, what you can do is you can write it like this, even better. Right? It's understood that it's over one. So now it's like a separate quantity. It's like, it's like this times this. 
And whenever you have the product of limits, by the way, as long as both pieces uh, exist, you can just multiply them. So let's actually break it up. Let's actually break it up. You can write this as the limit as x approaches 0 of 1 minus cosine x over x. And then you can write it as a product of limits times limit x approaches 0 1 minus cosine x. You can do that. I usually don't do this, but I wanted to show you that you can, right? Basically, as long as this exists and this exists, like if these are both limits, they're, if they're both equal to a number, you're good, right? So this is an unnecessary step, but just in case. And then this one here, via the formula, it's going to be zero times. And then this one here, we can just plug in the zero. So we drop the limit sign. So it's one minus the cosine of zero. Okay, so this is going to be equal to 0 times uh, 1 minus cosine of 0 is 1, right? It's the x-coordinate on the unit circle at 0. Uh, and then this is uh, 0 times 0, <laughs> so it's 0. Super clean, super simple. Let's go ahead and do uh, one more just for practice. Um, let's, let's raise the bar a little bit. Uh, this one's typically found in books. I'll make one up. It's something like this usually they usually throw this in a lot of textbooks maybe something like sine 3x over sine 4x i'm sure you're starting to see a pattern now by the way the answer here was going to be 3 over 4 right uh over here you saw the answer was uh 3 over 2 <laughs> this is what happens and then the answer here is 2 over 1 right there's a 1 here see 2 over 1 2 boom 3 over 2, boom. But the thing is, you, you, it's important to show the work. So people recognize this pattern and they start to think, oh, you can pull the numbers out. That's not really what's happening. All right, so for this one, we're going to use our super powerful formula. I'll write it in red. The limit as x approaches 0 of sine x over x. And this is equal to 1. This is the one we're going to use. This one takes a little bit of work. Usually books will give you a hint um when they give you a problem like this there's no hint in this video uh, i'm just going to show you how to do it <laughs> all right so this is the limit as x approaches zero and we're going to do it the same way we did the other ones so we're just going to write down what we want and fix it later and that's just in my opinion that's the best way so sine 3x well that's cool right we have that but what we really want is a 3x down here so what do we do we put it there Right, we do whatever we want. So that's the numerator. But we got to fix it. So I'm going to put a 3x here. Boom, goes away. See that? So you write down the 3x. You see, because that's what you want. And then you put this here to fix it. Because it's really 3x over 1, right? I won't write the 1, but it's really, really over 1. It's really this. But I'm going to eliminate that. On the bottom, we have sine 4x. Sine 4x. So you write it down. And then... Well, what do we want there? Well, we want a 4x. We want it to match, right? So you want it to match. So that's what you write. And then over here, you put the 4x. Boom. You see, so you write down what you want, fix it later. Write down what you want, fix it later. And that's just uh, a way, at least that's how my mind thinks. And these x's are going to cancel. Boom, boom. The 3 fourths, you can pull it out. This is 3 fourths times the limit as x approaches 0. And then here um, we have this limit up top. I'm going to show an extra step. I'm going to show an extra step here, 3x. And then on the bottom, we have um, sine 4x over 4x. And the extra step I'm going to show, I don't really need to show it, because, but I'll, I will. This is going to be 1, and this is going to be 1. But if you really want to, if you really want to do it, you can do this. So I'm going to show you 3 fourths times limit x approaches 0 of sine of 3x over 3x. And that's the numerator, right? What a beast. <laughs> In the denominator, we have the limit as x approaches 0 of sine 4x over 4x another beast look at that what a ridiculous monster it's beautiful this is 3 fourths times we know that this is going to be 1 by our super powerful formula up there 
Same thing on the bottom, so it's one over one. Whoops, 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 one over one. Three times one is three, four times one is four, we get three fourths, which we knew by our super cheap rule at the beginning, um, it's gonna be three over four. Personally, I don't take it this far. Like if I'm doing this and I'm showing, well, I am showing you how to do it, I hope so. Um, another way is just like this. This is probably sufficient in my mind. I don't think this is a necessary step, but people have different opinions. Yeah, so those are the two special formulas. I think with these examples, um, you know, we, we did a really easy one. So that one was really easy. And then we did one over here. It was a little bit harder because it had a number here. Then we did a simple one where we applied the other formula. And then um, you have this one here, which is typically in most calculus books have a problem like this. And they'll usually like give a hint or something because it's pretty tough to figure out on your own if you've never seen it.